So a lot of potential benefits with this method. Um, I use it in my own training and it's definitely something to consider if you fit into any of those categories. What's up guys, Sean Nalawani, realscienceathletics.com. And in this video today, we're gonna to be talking about one particular hypertrophy training method that you can use to build muscle effectively, but in a much more time and energy efficient way. Now I talked about uh, rest pause training in a previous video, which is a technique that I'm a big fan of and I personally use quite a bit in my own training. And this method here is a form of rest pause and it's called myo reps. So let's go over what myo reps are, why they're effective, how to implement them the right way, who should specifically use them, and I'm also gonna give you an actual demonstration of myself performing a mile rep set in the gym. If you're new here and you're looking for straight ahead, no BS fitness advice without all the regular fluff and gimmicks, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and turn on notifications as well to stay in the loop on future videos. So what is a mile rep set? It's actually pretty straightforward, and it's where you perform a regular set but using a slightly higher rep range, and then rather than taking a full rest period and then performing an entirely new set like you normally would, instead what you're going to do is just take a very short rest, perform a few more reps, take another short rest, perform a few more reps, and you're just going to repeat that for four to five of these additional low rep mini sets. And I'll explain uh, in a minute here exactly how to lay this out in terms of the actual rep ranges and the rest periods. Now, why would you do this? Well, uh, like we've talked about many times before on the subject of training effort, it's crucial to understand that it's only the last few reps of a given set when you're up near the point of muscular failure it's only those last few really difficult, uncomfortable reps. Those are the reps that are responsible for triggering significant muscle growth because those are the reps that are actually challenging the existing strength capacity of the muscle. Okay, the easier reps uh, before that, they don't give your body any incentive to change because the muscle already has more than enough resources to complete those reps. That's why they're easy. Um, it's only when you threaten the existing capacity of the muscle that your body's going to say, okay, this is a real threat here and we need to make some adaptations in order to deal with it. You'll probably get some growth stimulation once you reach around four to five reps shy of failure, but it's not going to be that significant at that point. Uh, it's usually going to be around three reps in reserve where something actually legitimately meaningful is gonna happen in terms of muscle growth. And more like zero to two reps in reserve, that's where the most significant growth is gonna be triggered. So the idea behind myo reps is that you're maximizing the efficiency of your training by reducing the number of jump reps that you're performing and just focusing in on those high quality muscle building reps up near failure. Now you're gonna find slightly different myo rep variations in terms of the exact rep ranges and the rest periods and the set counts, but I'll just give you the general framework here. So again, you're first going to start off with an initial activation set. I don't get the wrong idea based off of uh, the terminology because activation set almost sounds like it's a warm up or something, but that initial set is not a warm up. Um, you should just treat it like you would any other normal muscle building set. Now you don't necessarily have to go all the way to failure. Um, you can go to failure if you want, but just perform that set using whatever intensity level you're aiming for based on your own training approach, whether it's all the way to failure or uh, one rep in reserve or two reps in reserve and so on. Um, and the rep range for that initial set should be slightly higher. Usually it's going to fall somewhere between about 12 to 20 reps. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of really high rep sets because I think a lot of times people um, end up stopping the set, not because they're truly close to actual mechanical muscular failure, but instead they just stop the set because the overall general discomfort level gets too high in terms of muscle burn and cardiovascular stress uh, and even psychological stress. So I like to keep uh, to the lower end of that, but that's just me. Um, if you prefer higher reps, you can do higher reps, but around 12 to 20 reps would be standard for that initial set. Now, after the initial set, you're going to take a short rest. Uh, the usual recommendation is three to five deep breaths or around 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, the precise rest period is not some critical factor, but the main thing is to just try to keep it consistent each time so that you can properly track your progress if you are using myo reps on a consistent basis. But after that short rest, um, you're gonna pick the weight back up and perform your first mini set. And the mini sets are usually somewhere between about three to five reps. So do that, take another rest, do another three to five reps, and then just repeat that until you've performed four to five of those little mini sets. And with that approach, what you're doing is you're condensing a very high number of effective reps down into a shorter period, and you are optimizing the stimulus to fatigue ratio because you're performing way fewer junk reps in total. And now let me show you what an actual mile rep set looks like from my own training. I just filmed this uh, during my last workout on my iPhone, so the quality isn't great. Um, and 
this is just on a basic machine preacher curl. So here's the initial activation set. I was aiming for 12 reps, but I ended up getting 11. Um, I don't actually do this exercise regularly at the moment, so I wasn't sure exactly how much weight to use, but um, I just had to find a quiet spot in the gym where I could film because it was pretty busy. Uh, but this was definitely a zero RIR set. Um, I for sure was not getting another rep there. So after that initial set, there's a short rest. Uh, because I went all the way to zero RIR, I needed a bit longer to rest here. So I was doing uh, five really slow, deep breaths. Now here's the first mini set of three reps. Again, you can do four reps or five reps here, but I prefer lower reps. So I'm doing three reps here and I couldn't have even gotten more than three here if I tried anyway. Another rest period and then another three reps, another rest followed by three more reps, then the final rest. And then on the last set here, I only got two reps because I was pretty wiped out at that point. So again, just to be clear, um, the exact numbers in terms of the reps and the rest periods, that's not what's most important here. It's more so just about the general overall approach of a higher rep set followed by several lower rep sets with shorter rest in between and where you're going close to or all the way to failure each time. So performing a large number of effective reps within a smaller window. And if you wanna be even more efficient with this, uh, one method that I personally use sometimes, um, as far as I know, I thought this up on my own. Maybe it has been recommended somewhere else, but uh, if so, I'm not aware of it. But the other thing to keep in mind is that you don't even necessarily have to do a high rep activation set. You can do um, what I would call a myo rep drop set, where you can use a heavier weight for that initial set for a slightly lower rep range, and then just lighten the weight and use that lighter weight for those additional mini sets. Um, again, I personally prefer training in more moderate rep ranges. So what I might do is perform that initial set with a heavier weight in maybe the six to eight rep range, take a short rest, and then do the additional mini sets for three to five reps each, but just using a slightly lighter weight. But regardless of which exact method you use, why would you bother with myo reps in the first place? There's a few reasons. Uh, the first and most obvious reason is that it's just more time efficient. So depending on your current situation, if for some reason you need to get in and out of the gym more quickly, uh, then obviously it would be useful for that. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to do your entire workout using myo reps for everything. Um, one option could be maybe to do your compound movements using regular straight sets and then do your isolation uh, exercises in a myo rep style. Or maybe for uh, a particular muscle group, maybe for the first two exercises, you do those using regular straight sets. And then on the last exercise, you do myo reps. Um, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing, but it's just something that you can mix in here and there to make your training more efficient overall. Aside from efficiency, um, if there's a certain muscle group that you want to bring up and you want to increase the overall volume for that muscle, uh, then myo reps can be useful for that as well. Um, instead of doing maybe let's say six extra weekly sets for your upper traps, you could do one myo rep set and get a similar training effect, but without having to do six completely separate sets. Uh, myo reps could also be helpful if you're in a situation where you don't have access to heavier weights. So if you only have enough resistance to where um, you need to be doing, let's say 25 reps per set in order to get close to failure, you probably would prefer not to have to do a really large number of high rep sets like that. So in that case, um, you could do your initial set for 25 reps, take your quick rest, and then crank out a bunch of lower rep, my rep sets in order to get in all those effective reps without having to completely reset and do another 25 reps every time. If you've got a minor injury um, that you're trying to work around, then my reps can also be applicable uh, in that situation. Um, let's say you've got a slight issue with your lower back and the only way to work around it is by doing uh, high rep, lighter weight leg presses. But again, you don't wanna be doing, let's say uh, a bunch of 20 rep and 30 rep sets that are gonna fatigue the hell out of you and nauseate you and make you crazy sore. So again, you can do that initial lighter weight set for higher reps and then do the rest in a myo rep style so that you're still lifting that lighter weight, but you're getting to failure more efficiently. Um, and beyond all those things, you could just do myo reps because you enjoy them. You know, you just like doing them. And so on some exercises, some of the time you use myo reps instead of straight sets. There's really nothing wrong with that either. So a lot of potential benefits with this method. Um, I use it in my own training and it's definitely something to consider if you fit into any of those categories. And the only final point that I'd make here is that myo reps are probably more of an intermediate and beyond type of technique. Um, I like to see novices build up their overall base using more traditional methods, um, you know, basic free weight exercises, using regular straight sets, and then branching out from there. If you wanna get a solid program for that, then you can visit seannow.com slash custom. Just fill out the short form there and I'll send you back a free step-by-step -step training routine that you can follow based on your current condition and your goals, as well as a free nutrition plan as well. The link for that is up here, as well as down in the description box. Uh, but technically you could do my reps as a novice if you implement it properly and you really know what you're doing. But overall, I would say that it's more geared towards somebody with 
with uh, some reasonable lifting experience under their belt. And then secondly, you probably want to be doing this on, uh, let's say, mechanically simpler exercises. So I wouldn't recommend doing mile rep squats or mile rep deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts or uh, you know free weight dumbbell presses where you have to kick the weights up into position. Um, you can still use it on compound exercises, but if you're going all the way to failure, then you want to choose movements where there's less margin for error and where it's easier to get the lift into position. And for isolation exercises, um, I'd say any isolation movement is fine uh, to do myo reps on. So this isn't a technique that you must use. I'm not recommending that you go ahead and replace all your straight sets with myo reps, but depending on your current situation and your goals and your preferences, it's definitely a viable tool in the toolbox to consider. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to stay up to date on all of my latest content. Here's two more videos I'd recommend watching now. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see next. You can follow me over on Instagram as well for more daily tips and updates, and I will see you in the next video.